Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hello everyone. Today, Group 3 will be present a PowerPoint about ESP program design. But first of all, let me introduce our member. First, Riza Rizkyanti. Second is Safa Aulia Lestari. And me, Zarifa Arihana. Okay, so we are going to explain relating to the principles of determining course content, types of approach to course design, and last but not least, we are also going to talk about the ways of evaluating courses and materials. And let's go to the first topic, the principles of determining course content. In here, I'm going to explain about two things. First, determining the real and career content. In ESP, all teaching activities are presented in a context. The specific language teaching point is the real content of the material and the context is the career content. They are obviously cannot be separated while determining course content. So, I could say learners who is a radio announcer would be get real content such as the greetings, welcoming guests, doing an interview or doing ending shows along with their fields as known as radio announcer as the career content. Teacher might use a combination of text as career content. For example, we might develop an integrated skills activity in which learner read an advertisement product and make notes on the several vocabularies and its meanings listed. The learner could use the notes to prepare an oral report. After determining a course content, we can continue in planning syllabus. There are several points to conduct it. A. Considering the needs with needs analysis. Needs analysis is the first step in the course design cycle in ESP and refers to the systematic analysis of what learners need in order to operate in the target communicative situation. A present situation analysis may be conducted to discover the learner's immediate needs. These are likely to differ from target needs. ESP syllabus might be defined at the macro level in terms. For example, oral skills for a radio announcer, the actual content of the course will be expressed by functions such as persuading, entertaining, and so on. Hi, I am Riza and I'd like to explain you about another thing to consider in planning the syllabus for ESP course content. So the next point is considering the cultural issues in communication. Bas Stockman, 2010, in her book said that a course can accommodate the learners to be able to use their language in various contexts accurately, so that it requires the course to provide the authentic materials or authentic language use, and also to give the learners an insight about cultural issues when they deal with foreign business. This matter, of course, requires the syllabus specifies discourse or language items for this unit, such as the notions of weights and measures and the function of giving opinions and the next about content items such as uh, engaging the customer and presenting starting points and etc and the last one is cultural content on directness and gestures to accommodate the learners understanding in linguistic alaska 2016 in her article classified some learning approach from various experts as explained below. In mid 1960s until early 1970s, most of practitioners used sentence-based and form-focused. Therefore, the ESP course concentrated on the vocabulary and grammar. In mid 1970s until early 1980s, there are some changes in determining the learning approach in this era. The first stage was using functional approach which focused on communicative view of language teaching and learning. Second stage, the practitioners used linguistic approach such as rhetorical analysis. At the third stage, the change was connected with ESP course design such as need analysis. The last change was related to ESP teaching which focused on skills and strategies approach. In mid 19 and 
90s until 1990s. In this phase, ESP was characterized by two new directions. First, a linguistic direction or discourse, which involves both text analysis and a specific analytical method, while genre analysis concerned the study of the discourse form. Second direction is pedagogical direction, which based on learning-centered approach. In 2000 until present, the development of ESP is taken more on genre analysis. Here are the other aspects in planning the syllabus. The practitioners or course developers need to make decisions about some aspects. They are first, type of unit, such as skills, vocabulary, genres, functions, notion and disciplinary, professional or cultural content. And then second, items in the unit, such as which genres, semantic sets, and functions that must be included in the unit. And then the last one is the sequence of activities. So here, the practitioner should know what should come first, second, and so forth, and decisions made according to consideration such as immediate and less immediate need, level of difficulty with easier items before more difficult items, and logical flow. For instance, in business English, uh, opening meetings before closing meetings. And now, I'm going to explain about the approaches to course design. These are main types of approaches to course design. First is language-centered, second is skill-centered, and the third one is learning center. Let's find out more about each approach. Language center, course design. This is the simplest approach that focuses on the linguistic performance of the learner in the target situation. As we can see in the step of doing this approach, it's systematic, static, and inflexible since the teacher has already conducted the syllabus and make it as learner restricted instead of learner-centered. Second is skill-centered course design. This approach concentrates on competence which intended to help learners develop skill and strategies that will help them on understand the course. There is a stage of analyze skill or strategies required in mind map. It means it is not focuses on the achievement, yet to make learners aware of their own abilities and potential. Therefore, motivates them to work on the goals so they can continue to improve. And the third one is learning centered. In this approach, learners are ultimately responsible for their own learning using different strategies by the learner's desire. So, the learner's decision is determining the learning process completely. Because of that, learning is an internal process that depends on the knowledge that learners already know. That is why in the mind map here says a learning center must consider the learner in every stage. Hello everyone, I'm Safalia Lestari, number 062. I'll present the ways of evaluating course and materials. According to the 2006, to find out and compare test score about the student, we can use mixed method. So, what is mixed method? Mixed method is a research method by testing several occasions with consideration of the process through a combination of quantitative and qualitative. We have four characteristics of mixed method. First, the answers are open and ended. The answer based on participant feelings. Third, answers based on experience and participant data. And the last, answers are collected based on information data. So, how we can implement a mixed method? First, how type of data collection step by step or directly overall. Then, what is the content of question? Third, how does the combination of quantitative and qualitative data relate? And the last, 
knowing the usefulness of the result of mixed method research. We have three questionnaire type. First, structured questionnaire. The question that have a sequence according to the results of data collection. Then, unstructured questionnaire. The question contains opinion from participant and the questionnaire must provide an explanation of the question. And the last, quasi-structured questionnaire. The question contains a combination of point one and point two question. It contains question with choice answer, states them, and actually explains or completes. Now we are going on template-based approach. Learning to make children have language competence and be able to communicate using language skill such as listening, speaking, reading, and writing. Next, Gendry Paste has five app sequence. First, explaining the reason to pursue the proposed study. And then, establishing credentials related to the field of their work. Third, discuss relevant life experience. And the last, stating future career goals and describing personality. Of the five ways, the answer is obtained. First, explain academic or intellectual interest. Describe the understanding of the field. And the last, describe personal or family experience. So, that's all for group 3 presentation. Sorry if there are any mistaken. Thank you so much for your kind attention. And wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.